Now we move on to more complicated structures. And so we'll talk about logical statements and if, else, and constructs in MATLAB. So conditional structures are used very often. You, it's, it's basically impossible that you can avoid them because when you build algorithms and calculations, then quite often things are dependent on something else. And so you need uh, to be able to use relational operators. And in MATLAB, uh, the list is in here. So we have a comparison whether something is equal. And we use the double equality sign. So remember, it's the double one when you want to check something. Because single equality means assigning a value to a variable. This is one of the most common mistakes uh, in the beginning. Then there is the greater and smaller. And not equal is used with the tilde uh, character and equality sign. And then we have less or equal to, greater or equal to. Uh, so these are the kind of mathematical comparisons. And then there are, and then there are the um, logical operators. Uh, so and and or. Actually not also belongs to, to the logical operators. Uh, so, in order for you to uh, be able to use it correctly, let's just recall how those AND and OR look and work. So, uh, if you talk about combining two sentences, so for instance, I say, uh, today it is raining and it is cloudy. So if both these sentences are true, then I can say that this combined sentence with end is also true. But if one of them is false, so if I say today it is raining, or maybe not even, uh, I say now it is raining and now it is not raining. Uh, so one of them is true, one is false. If it's not raining now, so the first one is true, uh, sorry, uh, second one is true, first one is false. But if either one of them is not true, it means that the combined sentence is also not true. Because two sentences combined with end can only be as, as a whole true if both parts are, are true. So that's why here, in either way, if the second is false or first one, either one, then we get a false result. And of course, consequently, if both parts of the sentence are false, then of course the combined one is false as well. Now, this is a bit different from the OR statement, because OR means that we actually give this alternative that if either one of them is true, at least one, then we are okay. So that's why two true statements combined together are true, but also those where at least one is true are true as well. And we're only talking about false or sentence if both pieces are uh, not correct. And then there, there's a not. So uh, this one, of course, means like the opposite. So if we have a true statement and we negate it, so we say not that sentence, that it becomes false. And then if we negate false sentence, then we get a true one. And uh, if we talk about numerical values, so for instance, if you have variable x equal to 5, and then maybe y equal to 0, uh, for MATLAB, anything that is not 0 is treated as true. So it doesn't have to be a logical variable, it can be a numerical variable, but as long as it's not equal exactly 0, then it is true. And only if it's precisely 0, then it is uh, treated as logical uh, false. So now, where do we use those things? Uh, in if, if statements. So the most simple one is uh, the one where we just have if some expression commands to be evaluated if, uh, if true, and then end. So we have an example that uh, if 
somebody provides positive number of pens to be bought, then the cost of that purchase will be that number of pens times uh, the cost of an individual pen, and then we can display our results. So we have cost of uh, pens, which now will be this one, so number of pens is this one, so here we will have the cost. So here is also an example once again of fprintf. You can see always these uh, arguments are always filled in in that order as, as uh, the values appear here as inputs. Okay, so that was a simple if case. Uh, quite often we want to have some alternative. So in this example, we have again that if number of pens is positive, or at least non-negative, uh, then we can calculate cost of the pens, again, as the, the amount times uh, the cost per unit, and we can display the result. But otherwise, so if, if not this, so if the opposite case, uh, we would like to say that an invalid number of pens was specified, because we cannot buy minus 5 pens, we can only buy a positive amounts. So this is where else comes in. Else is like otherwise. So this will only be done if this first part has not happened. So if it wasn't true. But now we can go even further. So there's not only if and else. There are also so-called uh, else ifs. So you can give intermediate expressions, you can check multiple things and based on those uh, you can have individual commands to be evaluated. So how it works is it always starts from the beginning. So first it checks expression 1. If this one is true, it will end. It will never visit any other case. Uh, but if uh, this is not true, it will move on to number 2. So it will check expression 2. If that one is true, this will be evaluated. If not, it moves on. So it will keep it will keep on checking until it finds the one which is true, and then do the job. If every else if, so if and all those else ifs are false, then it will end on else, in this case. But it could also be that this else is not there, you don't need an else, it, it really depends on the task you're doing. So now, for, the, for an example, uh, let's see here, so let's see that the cost of the pens would actually vary depending on how many pens are purchased. Uh, so now we have uh, some total cost for the pens, uh, so this would already include how many there are, so if we buy anything between 0 and 19 inclusive, so less than 20, then we pay a specific amount. Uh, otherwise, if it's between 20 and 40, then we get some discount. So, uh, for instance, we get 5% discount, so now there's fewer of them. And then, else, if we buy uh, at the cost between 40 and 100, then we can get discount 10%, so we only pay 90% of of that. So we have different cases and then else again because if, if you look uh, what has been so between 0 and 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 100. So now not valid number of pens. This would mean that uh, either somebody gave a negative number or on this side somebody could have given a, a number or a pens would have been greater than 100. So it might be that the task or this particular purchase doesn't allow uh, doesn't allow uh, for for the purchase to be above 100. Uh, but also there's one more thing uh, that we we can since we may have this uh, invalid number of pens. So one way would be to include this f print f in every case where there would be a purchase, 
But instead of putting that long line everywhere, what we can do is uh, define a variable which we call in programming a flag. And first we say that it's false, so we assume there will be no sale. But in case one of these conditions is satisfied, so the one where purchase actually happens, we switch sale to true. So that will cause it, uh, that, that will make it so that uh, this is now true, so that in this final second if, we say if sale, so this basically says if true, uh, print the cost of the pens. But in case uh, this doesn't happen and this doesn't happen and this doesn't happen, so we only have the display, it, it means that sale still remains false, then here if false, since this is not true, it will not evaluate uh, this part. And you don't have to limit uh, yourself to four expressions like we have in here. You can have as many as your case needs. And sometimes you may have also ifs embedded in other ifs. But once again, that's always case dependent.